And we are back. KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. You're listening to the Ask Brian radio show. And Mr. Engineer, how do you spell Brian? B-R-I-E. And, correct? You, are you not uh, cooperating today? What's, what's oh, going no. On? It is definitely B-R-I-E-N, Brian. That's the only way we spell it here. That's correct. And why do we spell it that way? Because that's the correct way to do it, not with an A and not with a Y. And what does E stand for? E stands for the expert. Experts, excellence, we are everything. Yes. That's what E stands for. Now, for people that have never listened to the Ask Brian radio show, I guess, you know, this is something new to you, and I think you should start learning uh, by listening to the Ask Brian radio show. Ask Brian is part of the Ask Brian network and the ASKBRIEN.com website. Ask Brian allows people to ask and answer business questions. Uh, has experts that are qualified. So not everyone can become an expert. If you do apply to become an expert on the Ask Brian network and you qualify, then you are allowed to ha post your videos, your blog posts, uh, um, um, e-books, and you are allowed to post your webinars on the master calendar. The master calendar allows subscribers to put your webinar on calendar on their Google Calendar so that they can watch you whenever they need to, and it allows you to expand your network and get more, more customers, more clients through the webinars. So Ask Brian was created for that. The Ask Brian Radio Show is an offshoot, and the Ask Brian Radio Show basically goes to teach people business lesson every week, and that's what we're here for. And we have a very, very good cast today, like we do every week, and my lovely co-host, Listening to Lindsay Mann. Hey, Brian. Thanks for having me back. Not a problem. And we have a very, very good guest today. We also have a new special guest. Special guest will be on once a month, and she will be doing her own little segment. We're going to start out today at the end of the show, so make sure you listen to her. Her name is Tamara Lear. 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 Apologize. <laughs> And without any further ado, we have our special, special guest today, and that is Mr. Scott McDonald. Yes, holy cow, am I happy to be here. Thank you. I, I knew I'd be on the radio when I woke up this morning. Well, you probably had a dream last night. You said, hey, what can I do today to really, really exciting and teach people something? And that was going on the Ask Brian radio show. That was my dream. Is that what you were thinking? <laughs> it was. That's what yes. I was thinking. That's what yes. Lindsay was thinking. That's what Tamara was thinking. Yeah. The engineer yeah. said, what am I going to do today? Oh, that's right. I got the Ask Brian radio show. <laughs> so people don't know you, Scott, so we're going to introduce you. So first of all, let's get a little bit about your background. Um and I'm not going to go back to, you know, your childhood school days <laughs> when you're playing street hockey at, <laughs> t at age two. Yeah. We're going to up it a little bit. But right. uh, essentially, let's go to your business career. So sure. my understanding is I think you started at the Leo Burnett uh, ad agency. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah. That's how, so right. how did that happen? That happened uh, – I was in uh, graduate school, actually – uh, we'll get to this later, but I've, a lot of my career has been spent in kind of the legal industry. I actually went into graduate school for business. My condolences about that. Well, <laughs> it didn't last long from the lawyer standpoint because I was uh, in law school for literally a day before I said, "Not nah, this is not for me. <laughs> and I uh, just got my business degree in graduate school. And uh, I speak Spanish, and so I got a lot of jobs in uh, South America. Um, and I got one job up in Chicago, and that was, and I went and visited it. It was, it was, uh, it was Leo Burnett. I had my interviews, and it was extremely kind of exciting to be in that city. This is before the winter set in. So this <laughs> Miami boy, someone grew up in Arizona, Miami, San Diego, never really had winter except for a skiing jaunt. Um, went to Chicago, and I said, wow, this is October. It's not, the weather doesn't seem too bad. How bad could it really be here? And, uh, and the, the advertising agency just seemed so cool and sexy, and I was like, yeah, I've never really even thought about advertising, but, yeah, let's give it a shot. And so uh, that started kind of my career in marketing. Now, you know I went to the University of Buffalo, correct? I t yes, I do. It's, it's very warm there, and there's no wind. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. I understand that, right. And you understand sarcasm, so that's a yeah. good one. Check <laughs> off that box. All right, here we are. Yeah. So you did. Uh, what, what did you do for the ad agency? I worked uh, on the Procter & Gamble business. Which Small little company, huh? Little company, uh, cheer detergent, Pert Plus shampoo, if you remember Pert Plus. I think it still exists. Of course exists. I do. Um, some diaper brand, um, and uh, yeah, that was that was almost like I had three master's degrees. 
I was getting paid almost nothing and working investment banking banker hours. You know, you could work at Ask Brian for that rate. <laughs> you're, 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 I'll, I'll give you my resume as soon as this is over. Um, we need all the help we can get. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I do good work for free, and um, yeah, was, and uh, so I, I, I went through that for two years. Horrible, horrible kind of like work experience, just because it was just hours, like. My, my boss had a, a, had a joke at one point. It was like, if you don't come in on Saturday, don't bother coming in on Sunday. Um, which and, and it was true. People were there all weekend. We were there all night. I had dinner pretty much every single night at work. Um, definitely not the Australian business mindset. And um, and uh, I, uh, I hated it. But I also got the greatest education in advertising and marketing that I could have ever imagined. Truly great. Well, that, that, that's very interesting because it seems to me like you work in the same hours that associates work at law firms. Correct. Yeah, I think so it was, but I made about a fourth of that. Oh, so yeah. th well, that's very, very smart. So you worked <laughs> the same amount of hours as a lawyer, yeah. didn't go to law school, yeah. and got paid a quarter of what a lawyer. Yeah, that's that, right. that makes sense. You know, right. The legal secretary is making more than you were. I got it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Obviously. Now, uh, what, but what were you working on at, at Burnett? So I was doing – I was a media buyer and planner. So that what those guys do is they figure out where to put the client's advertising dollars um, across any number. This is a little bit pre-internet, but it was, you know, big-time television purchases, radio, print, um, out-of-home advertising, including billboards, uh, magazine, newspaper, you know, the list goes on. It was really kind of like in that offline world is how to effectively buy media to achieve your client's goals. And it was usually like some level of I need to increase our sales by 7% versus last year kind of thing. And then, and then where did you go after that? Then um, I, I quit after about two years with uh, just one because I felt like I'd had it. Two is because I felt like the, I, I learned so much and I was running into so many different people that could – um, use my help um, that I said, I think I could probably have a little business and just and immediately like triple my income, have my hours. And that was pretty much exactly what happened. So, so I started you're just freelancing. So you were making a wage by then, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You tripled your income. Yeah, right. Uh, and, uh, and then um, did that for, for a few years. It was, it was nice there for a while because all of the – that was the kind of the birth of the dot-coms. And all of the dot-coms were like sucking in advertising agency talent, um, hiring anybody that had marketing against their title or, you know, product or anything. Um, and so I kind of had my pick of uh, – agencies to work with, uh, to work with uh, as a freelancer as opposed to having to go work for anybody kind of full-time. And it was great for, for a few years until the dot-com crash. And then, so where did you go after that? So then I worked at a digital advertising agency that handled things like uh, Hotels.com, CheapTickets.com, actually dot-coms that were working, that, that, that were making money, LowerMyBills.com, things making like that. Revenue, making really revenue, that's really Making revenue in 2001 concept. to 2004. Um, and that's where I met uh, my my longest term employer, which was LegalZoom.com, because they were a client of mine. And uh, once uh, they were looking, one, once they were looking to build their own marketing department, they asked me if I wanted to be the first marketing hire. So when you joined LegalZoom, how many people did they have there? Yeah, I think forty five. Forty five. So that yeah. was pretty decent size. Yeah, it was pretty pretty. I mean, and it was a lot of uh, document processors and customer service people. But I mean, at forty five, you would expect somebody to ha have a a marketing department by then, no? They had, you know, kind of people that dipped in and out of marketing. The the two of the founders were running the Google ads. They had another kind of early investor that was doing their affiliate marketing, uh, and so, but n no one with a real marketing. So job. they That's were winging they it all day. They were winging it for sure. Now, yeah. Lindsay has a question. Yes. Well, yeah. I was just wondering what, uh, uh, you know, how do you how do you uh, find the best people in your industry? You know, what are what are these your clients looking for? Uh, it depends. Depends on the clients. The, most of the people I work with are people that say, I have a dollar, I need to make $3 out of it. And, and I actually prefer that world as opposed to give me a pretty television ad. I like having results against which to be measured. And what, what that means for me is that, you know, I'm t typically talking to the, the people I typically work with on my, you know, on my, if I'm consulting on a business are companies like, they started a business. They got a Series A round of funding. They've made their Google ads work, and they're doing some Facebook advertising. And now their board of directors are looking at them, and they're saying, okay, you did this. You got us this far. We gave you some money. 
what are you going to do now? Mm -hmm. And that's typically where I would step in. Uh -huh. And that was pretty much the case of where LegalZoom was. And how do you, how do you have a, do you have like a business plan when you get on, when you, when you get a project? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's, you know, it's, it's a full plan, but it's not, I'm not pulling it out of the ether. It's, it's a plan based on experience. Like I don't want to mess around with trying a lot of new things on a new, on a new client's done. I want to say 80% of this, has worked for me before, mm -hmm. and we're going to do this again. Yeah. And we're going to get you started this way. Twenty percent of it might be, all right. Well, let's 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 try some different things because you're a new client, new new industry, or whatever. Um, but I want I want that first say six months to be like, oh, okay, you proved yourself. Let's uh, now what now what can we do? Right now, how important is it? Uh, how important does school play a role in what you do? Did you would you say that you learn more just from uh, you know learning things in the field and doing things that way, or did your school did, did the master's degrees and everything actually really set the foundation for you? I learned more probably in my first three weeks in real work than I did in three master's degrees. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. that that's a very typical concept that you know schooling gives you some background, some information. Yeah. But the reality is what you learn in school, you know, maybe in your lifetime you may be using some of those things. But most of the things, it's just once in a while you'll pick one thing out of that you learned in school. But most of it's like on-the-job training. This is what I do. This is what I need to do. That's a right. And in digital marketing, it changes overnight. I have to have full-time experts in every area because it's constantly evolving. And Google and Facebook are God. If they change the rules, you adapt. So well, they're changing it all the time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, three years at uni just uh, for a digital marketing course isn't anywhere near as important as getting into a job quickly and just learning because the cost per click is going up. But that would be my question to you then. I mean, for small businesses where the, the cost um, per click has become almost unattainable now, yeah. it's tripled. We had our time, right, where mm -hmm. we could own online mm -hmm. and grow our businesses. Mm -hmm. What are you recommending to listeners who um, find that they're not in that Series A, they don't have that money tree. How do they find um, or get attention online in order to drive sales? Uh, I I often recommend that they wrap their head in tinfoil and weep bitterly in a closet. <laughs> um, no, th th there really is. And take a antidepressants too. <laughs> correct. Yes, if you can afford them. Uh, the the, um, the, the there is good news, which is that there is a lot of kind of um, fundamental free of advertising and marketing that you can do before you have to start really sp spending money on pay-per-click or whatever and that includes you know writing your own content making sure your website is being able to be visible by you know Google and Bing and other websites out there um, start building your email list so you can start communicating people uh, create your own Facebook page like all of this so far is like basically free you can create videos just and and people are very forgiving about videos especially if they come across as authentic i believe especially in my last christmas video uh, correct <laughs> and um and and the ability to just like post those videos on things that you're an expert on or talking about your business on youtube and your facebook page and your home page and all, all sorts of different things um then uh I've, I, I've discovered something in the last few years which is um the ability you know reporters are looking for content all the time and the ability to kind of reach out to those reporters and say hey I'm actually an expert in XYZ industry anytime you need me you can call on me or the reporter will go out and use a, a site like it's called what is it called Haro help H -A, a reporter out yeah and they'll say hey I'm looking for an expert to talk about whatever um, say uh, how much vacation time to give my employees well I happen to be a, an expert on that says the HR person um, I'm gonna I'll, I'll write you an article about that or I'll, I'll give you a quip about that that allows them to take your quote put it in their article attribute the quote to you your business is seen your name is seen and then that helps your overall kind of web presence but that is a very slow and long process if you don't have the funds right it is and so uh, and so that's why you know uh, all, all of these things kind of work together, obviously word of mouth, and you've got to have a good product and service just fundamentally to start out with. But um, the, the, the combination of those things are greater than the, the, than the sum of the parts. Um, and uh, that's, that's really how, how I've seen a lot of these businesses get started. Um, and that's when, okay, they, they, they've made a name for themselves. They've got some business. And now that's when they can start looking for maybe friends and fa family money or some Series A uh, round. 
So that would be the first step to, for customer acquisition. My my idea for customer acquisition is just yeah exactly to um, to get started. You you don't have to really spend any money. You just have to spend some time on it. I which think should getting be a your why anyway. is pretty important too. Uh, if yeah. you really understand and, and start a movement online, people will join that and become part of your community. And I'm seeing that a lot of these micro communities are quite powerful. And for so long, everyone chased likes and all that sort of stuff. But I say likes is vanity. Yeah. Um, content is sanity. Mm -hmm. And conversion <laughs> is king. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're a small business, I mentor a lot of small businesses uh, with no money. Um, and I say activity equals outcome, but make sure you have a really strong why. Why are you doing this? Like really come across to the people that you're trying to talk to so they get it and they not only get it, but they go out there and they, they basically become your advocates or your, your raving fans and tell all their friends online. So very good why and obviously activity equals outcome. So Very, yeah, very good agree. point. Mm -hmm. uh, Lindsay, you had a question. Well, have you guys ever heard of uh, uh, um, Upwork? Use yes. the freelancers from there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And right. in your experience from there? Uh, my experience has been pretty good uh, on there because we were looking at Upwork to create uh, a host of new articles. And the nice thing about it was that we were able to kind of put out a prompt and say, this is what we want to write about. And then we got, we actually paid the people that submitted proposals to us oh. and gave us, say, a, a page of content. And we would see if it kind of matched our brand voice and what we were, we were looking for. And we hired on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. And you don't have an issue, uh, if, say, if you work for a company and, and uh, you don't have an issue hiring outside people to do the job? No, definitely not. In fact, um, the, cl the company where I am right now, which is kind of the, the follow-up to LegalZoom, which is called Biz Council, I'm back to, after having run marketing departments of up to 30 people, I'm back to basically a marketing department of one. Uh, it's four of us founders, and we're, we're doing everything except for, like you say, Hiring people here and there to help us out on when yeah. where they're there when when they are more of an expert than we are. Yeah. Now, and if you can, can sorry. How do you acquire people though when you have such a small group and s little funding? Well, um, we other than what we discussed. Yeah, we actually do have some funding. Um, so that so that's nice. So we've we've gone from we're we're building out content, but we also spend quite a bit actually in Facebook advertising quite a bit in uh, Google advertising as well. And Facebook is a lot less expensive than Google, correct? Well, it's uh, it can be, or <laughs> it, could be, it could be way more expensive, um, wow. just depending on how much effort you put into it. I've been hearing that Instagram is really, really popular. Now, do you guys choose Facebook over Instagram? Uh, we do both because Facebook owns that Instagram, and so you're able to push ads through both and okay. kind of look at your results through both channels. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, generally, I find that Instagram works very well for those visual products. Right. Um, tougher to not, though not impossible to sell legal services. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I think people are looking for that kind of visual pop. All right. So we've got about one minute left. So. Uh, if somebody uh, has gone through the phase and they're starting out their business, um, what and you only had, you have no money, okay, and you've gone through all the ideas that you've already gone, uh, where are you going to go to get your? How are you going to build a funnel and get clients? Uh, how, how am I? Well, um, the the other thing we haven't talked about was basically attending um, uh, conferences and different meetings of. Um, like-minded people that, that where you can start talking about you know the the original marketing is one-to-one -one and talking about what you're selling and and uh, and why you're selling it okay mm -hmm. we're going to be right back listening to khs 1220 and 98.1 fm because i'm a new yorker <laughs> why do people from all over santa clarita come to our spa in canyon country simple they want the highest quality services at prices that everyone can afford this is Rosemary from Beyond Harmony Med Spa. Read our reviews and know why we won the Ultimate Beauty Awards two years in a row by the readers of Elite Magazine. Come and see how close we really are and experience the level of excellence that our clients have loved for the past 13 years. Go to beyondharmony.com or call 298-8008 today for a free consultation. Live life juiced up at Juice It Up Valencia. Come in and try our great tasting smoothies, protein shakes, acai, and wheatgrass for your healthy lifestyle on the go. Also, enjoy our 10 flavors of tantalizing zinc frozen yogurt and selection of healthy toppings. Juice It Up Valencia is located at the corner of Newhall Ranch Road and Copper Hill Drive in the Office Depot Plaza. Open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. and Sundays from 
8 until 8. And remember to live life juiced up at Juice It Up Valencia. If you have a business problem, if someone doesn't honor their agreement and you need an aggressive attorney with over 27 years experience, the law office of Peter Bronstein has helped partners resolve disputes, franchisees resolve disputes, and other business owners who have a challenge. Let the law office of Peter Bronstein take your stress away. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. Don't wait too long and lose your rights. Solve your business challenge problem today. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. We all know sometimes people lose their way. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, The Way Out Recovery SCV may have the answers you've been waiting for. The Way Out is the premier intensive outpatient treatment center serving Santa Clarita. Asking for help is the first step. Call The Way Out today, 661-296-4444. That's 296-4444 for a private free assessment. The Way Out is an accredited, affordable outpatient program that accepts most insurance. Call us at 661-296-4444 or check us out online at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. Quit battling with yourself. Ask The Way Out for help today. The big one is back. Circus Vargas, Circus Vargas, Circus Vargas. The biggest big help is back in time. The Big One is back with the greatest of ease, bringing acrobats, daredevils, and flying trapeze. Don't miss Circus Vargas 50th Anniversary Extravaganza under the Big Top in Palmdale at the Antelope Valley Mall, November 15th through 25th. Run away with the circus for two unforgettable hours of nonstop action and adventure, guaranteed to thrill and enchant children of all ages. For family entertainment at its finest, don't miss Circus Vargas at Antelope Valley Mall, November 15th through 25th, where memories are made and cherished for a lifetime. Get tickets with Test Drive at Camacho Auto Sale. Buy your tickets now at CircusVargas.com. The big one is back. Circus Vargas, Circus Vargas. Circus Vargas. Have you heard about Assistance League Retail Store? For a good time and a great deal and bargains that are an amazing steal, there are friendly volunteers ready to share a smile. So come on in and stay a while. We take donations on gently used goods and proceeds from our sales stay in the neighborhood. So for a great buy and a special find, come visit our store anytime. Assistance League Resale Store located at 24369 Main Street in downtown Newhall. California's housing crisis affects us all. While only one third of our neighbors can afford to buy a home, the lack of new home construction prevents the rest of us from living our dream. That's wrong. And State Senator Scott Wilk is doing something about it. Senator Wilk is leading the fight to make housing affordable. Scott Wilk, a true housing champion. Sponsored by California Real Estate Independent Expenditure Committee, California Association of Realtors. <laughs> Hometown, your hometown station. Welcome back. Welcome back. KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM with my co-host, Lindsay Mann. And my special guest, Tamara. Yeah. Did you just fall off a cliff? <laughs> yes, I did. And and our our host, uh, not our host, excuse me, our guest tonight today, who's giving a lot of information. Everybody needs to listen to it. He's from Biz Council, and his name is Scott Mac. Donald. Hey, you had me back after the commercial segment. I consider that a success. I, I consider it a success that I kept you here. <laughs> and, 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 and it's only because we had those handcuffs. Thank, yeah. you, thank you very much, Lindsay. All right, so here we are back. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> anyway, so what is the company that you're currently with right now? Yeah, it's bizcouncil.com, and what it is... Uh, Can you spell that? Because people yeah. don't think it's B-U-S, and it's not. Correct. Thank you very much. It's uh, B-I-Z-C-O-U-N-S-E-L. And what is that? It is uh, – it's a little bit of the, the follow-up to what we did at LegalZoom. I was at LegalZoom for 10 years, 
the original, one of the original founders of LegalZoom, Brian Liu, and I uh, have always wanted to go. So we, we thought of LegalZoom as we're going we're, we're gonna to launch a business and we're going to help people achieve their dreams. Biz Council is more about, okay, you're three to ten years into the business. You, you're, you, you, you chase the dream, but now you're dealing with just the day-to-day of life. And that involves compliance issues and contracts that you need to look at and sign and tax issues and all these legal questions that occur to a small business three to eight years in instead of, you know, just getting my formation docs going. So th- that, that's, the, that's the stuff that, imp- that entrepreneurs just don't want to deal with. Um, they want to focus on making more money or making a difference. Dealing with the stuff that we actually like to deal with is not their forte. And so we're trying to fill this area of affordable legal guidance, affordable tax guidance for the small business so we take care of the crap that they hate dealing with. And that's uh, B-I-Z-C-O-U-N-S-E-L.com? That's right. And how long has that been going on? We uh, started that late last year, so late 2018, and didn't really start um, doing a kind of a beta offering until late January. And um, if you can tell us, and you may not be able to, Mm -hmm. so uh, your revenue started out at zero and went to what? Uh, (laughs) I can't tell tell you that. All right. (laughs) Well, after the show, you know, we'll pin them down. We'll get the real numbers. (laughs) We'll come back to you guys. Don't worry. So uh, that must have been very hard because you're starting with a company that had nothing. Yeah, it had it had nothing except we what we did have was our knowledge and our experience from LegalZoom. So that was over a decade of talking to business owners and understanding what they wanted, what they don't want, what they like to focus on and not focus on, um, and uh, you know all of that stuff was very helpful to us in okay, what's the next what's the next thing that we can offer business owners that would really help their lives, make their life easier. Now that can be for any business owner. So you can have a brick and mortar you know, on the furniture store down the street or you know, be an online uh, e-commerce business. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Correct? That's right. What we learned is that entrepreneurs, business owners, uh, 87% of them in this country try to deal with legal stuff on their own, whether it's like taking a template off of the internet and trying to kind of redline something themselves, make it force fit to the master service agreement that they're creating or sending demand letters or trying to parse, you know, legal language on something, you know, as an attorney, that's like that, that's painful to hear because people can make big mistakes. Um, but that's how I made my business. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so we wanted to be, and, and one, and we know the reasons why they don't want to talk to an attorney about this stuff is because they're afraid of that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start paying $300 an hour. I don't know how long that clock is going to start stop ticking, and I don't know what that ultimate bill is going to be. There's, I think, a, a healthy level of intimidation there. And I think also entrepreneurs are generally half-glass-full people, and so I think a lot of them think, ah, I'm probably not going to get sued on this. And and actually, when you look at the what are the biggest fears of business owners, out of 87 fears lawsuits actually come in extremely low 75 78 something like that that i that kind of surprised me i would thought that that's top 10 but the most recent research says that they're not really thinking about lawsuits what they are thinking about is oh this government regulation or all this paperwork i have to do or the tax changes and so that's what we're trying to help with okay so we're going to go over now for the rest of the show about customer acquisition so uh when you start a business and it doesn't have to be biz council it could be any business could be the guy down the street. It could be yeah. th- he could be there for 20 years. How do you start acquiring customers when you are a business that maybe has only been around for two or three years, and you may have a location, you may be online? Yeah. Um, so uh, if for anybody that heard or didn't hear the, the first segment, there's a lot of things that you can do for free, including you know building your own content, creating, creating your own kind of social presence out there. Um, uh, what about flyers? If you're if you're brick and mortar, I you know I say I say go for it. <laughs> um, really, it's it's any way to get those initial customers and and then being able to do something with them. First of all, make sure that they're satisfied. But also, second thing is figure out ways to get them to, for example, give reviews of your company. Give them make it easy for them to refer you to their friends. Here's an email. Um, if you can refer us, you know, you, any any referred customer, you'll get uh, a month for free or 20% off your next purchase. Uh, make the customer, the happy customers that you already have, part of your kind of ambassadors to spread the word. 
and again, it's not, it doesn't cost money. It just takes some time and some thought. And I think the people that do it really well, uh, they have a good product or service, and they naturally think, okay, how can I get Steve, who just bought from me, to tell Jane about this? And how do you hire the first person, for instance, either when not it's a digital agency or a or an ad agency, or how do you hire that first one? Because you haven't done it before. Now you may be making a little bit of money. You're getting some money coming in. How do you hire that first one? Um, I think. I've seen all types of businesses do different hires successfully. Some go kind of more after the, the creative person. Um, my my um, bias is always to kind of hire more of the person that uh, is kind of more of a CFO in a marketer's body. So in other words, they think about how do I get my next customer kind of profitably? We'll worry about what the beautiful print ad or TV ad or you know takeover of – yahoo.com is going to look like a couple years from now let's make sure let's let's make some money and prove out uh the messaging that we have right now can actually work that's another great i you know thing to do with for example when you are able to start spending on say facebook.com whether you're a website or you're a brick and mortar um to be able to kind of figure out the messaging that attracts your customer base that so that you can kind of use that same messaging in other sales tools that you have, like your website or what you say to a customer when they walk into your store, um, or you know, big time in the future for your Super Bowl ad. You know, all of these things uh, should be recorded and remembered. And um, uh, it's uh, it's you know so some of the some of the some of the best lines that LegalZoom had in our radio ads, and we spent well over ten million dollars a year, um, kind of in our heyday. Uh, came from learning what worked in Google, search ads. So uh, uh, Lindsay has a lot of questions. I have one last question. That is, what was your biggest success? <coughs> you mean second to coming on the show today? Well, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> yes. I knew that, but I just wanted to let everybody else know that. Yeah. Uh, second to that uh, would be uh, the thing that I'm kind of most proud of is seeing podcast advertising before really anybody else did. LegalZoom, along with um, uh, one of those uh, website builders, oh, Squarespace, mm -hmm. and I think like ProFlowers or something like that, were one of the first three brands that, start, that saw the opportunity in podcast advertising and started investing a lot of money there. And now podcast advertising is, is kind of a, its own industry and empire um, and, uh, and getting bigger every day. Um, but we were one of the first companies to see the, that opportunity. And back then, it was like podcasters didn't know how to sell their inventory. It was fantastic. It was like the wild, wild west. It was like their advertising before that was, well, I've got a link on my website for Amazon.com. If you want to buy anything on Amazon.com, go there, and I, the show makes 10%. So we would just go to these podcasters and go like, hey, you've got 100,000 people listening to you. I'll give you $200. How does that sound in order to talk about LegalZoom? They're like, yeah, sounds good. Now it's all, you know, stratified and canonized. And, but, um, but back then it was great. What a great time. I think podcasts, I love podcasts. I just started listening to them and subscribing to all of mm -hmm. them. And it's just amazing how much you can learn now, right? Yeah. Aside from YouTube and everything. Do you guys have a podcast? We do. We don't, no. <gasps> I, Are you kidding me? Come on, you need to jump on that. Yeah. Well, one of the one of the reasons we we, we actually should. That's a, probably a good idea. Uh, starting today, right? Uh -huh. as soon, uh, in my well, he, he's just going to sponsor Ask Brian, so we're, we're <laughs> yeah, that's right. So um, when starting your when starting your business, um, how did you transition out? You transitioned out from LegalZoom, and you start you partnered up with a couple guys, and there was no conflict of interest. And when you guys started the company, how did you guys, you know, model every model this new business? Well, um, I am partnered with three attorneys. I'm the one non-attorney in the group. I and hope so somebody uh, w listened to your, uh, read your documents. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Read, <laughs> read and reread. Um, for you, because you know, you got three, wa three oh, sharks and you, I just, <laughs> I know that's true. I don't, I just trust them and I sign whatever they they've been good to me. A typical biz council customer. Okay, great. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Brian and I worked at LegalZoom together for 10 years and, uh, we thought we, we knew we wanted to kind of chase this new marketplace. Um, and we are doing that with a couple of other, um, unbelievably 
uh, talented attorneys out of UCLA, uh, Curtis Brown and Arya Feruzman. Um, and they, these guys are kind of like the way Brian and I were 15 years ago, just like complete go-getters. And we're going to go take the world by storm. Uh, and you've got the older folks, Brian and me there, that are that uh, you know maybe have a little gray hair at the temple <laughs> and have uh, been there, done that. Uh huh. So, uh, what would you say? And how long have you guys been in business for? You said about a year and a. A year. Yeah, Biz Council has been around for about a year, but we've been together doing different uh, business opportunities for about three years. Okay. So, uh, if uh, if you could do anything different, if you can change one thing, wh what would what would it be? His hairstyle. Oh, sorry. Uh, that. <laughs> um, uh, at least he's got hair. <laughs> <laughs> a guy can Tamar. dream. A guy can dream. Sorry. Thank, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> if I could change one thing about uh, if you can this if you can do anything over again, what would it be? Not come on the show and listen to that question. But go ahead. Well, I'll <laughs> tell you. Uh, for, uh, you mean with respect to Biz Council? Yeah. So there has been some um, kind of big expenditures we've made before we kind of truly understood our messaging and our customer. Um, and we probably could have built to those expenditures um, and, and really learned that, okay, this messaging is going to work before going out to the market with it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so more testing. dollars and cents, yep. more mm -hmm. testing. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you just think business is so broad. There's so many different types of industry. You yeah. have a certain amount of money yeah. to spend. How are you, how do you decide which industry to go after? Uh, yeah, um, that's interesting. So you mean when we're looking at people, industries that could use our service? Exactly. Yeah, well, this exactly. We got to, we got to start somewhere. Just researching on the internet helps a little bit about, you know, Okay, so we know that restaurants, for example, they get sued all the time. They have deal stuff to deal with all the time. Uh, employees, minimum wage stuff, alcohol, um, slip and falls in restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, and so like I like alcohol. Yeah. You and, and uh, what about the medical field? Wonderful. You know, all the malpractice issues and stuff like that. Perfect. There's the medical malpractice and, and you've got, you know, things to worry about, you know, patients, th things that patients need to sign. What attorney is going to look over those things? So, so it started off more from our just common sense knowledge of like, what are the industries that really have to deal with legal stuff a lot? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, and then we go out into the marketplace and then we see if those assumptions were correct. And then it turns out, oh, actually contractors need us a lot and, and web service companies need us a lot and construction needs us a lot. So, you know, some surprises along the way. So I you're beyond business then, correct? Where was that? Was that? You're you're not just uh, business attorneys. You're actually doing things beyond business law. Uh, yes, we've also partnered with uh, a really great tax company as well. So they do basically what we do for law. They do for tax. So unlimited tax guidance, um, and then discounted um, filings for you know what's tax time. But like for other civil litigation, like divorce and that type of stuff. No, we don't. Biz Council does not handle okay. that. Yeah. Are you guys finding um, most of your success with uh, entrepreneurs, brick and mortar businesses, um, you know, uh, college students? Uh, um, you know, because our, our service is not free. Um, very often, just the very new startup without any money uh, isn't going to be using us for a long time. So they, they might need us for, you know, one thing and then they're gone. Um, generally, we're, ta we're working with companies it could be web, it could be brick and mortar. It's really all over the place. The, mm -hmm. the, the data is really encouraging that the, um, if you're a small business and you've got employees or if you've been around for three to eight years, say three to 15 years, um, you've got legal stuff and tax stuff that come up all the time. We're, we're there for you. Right. Now I see on your website, you guys have, uh, you guys can get, a, uh, a person can get qualified, which I'd like to know what, what are the qualifications um, to, to have the service? Yeah, we, we got to make sure that we're right for your business. Like a, um, somebody with really kind of scary legal needs, um, maybe they're in a lawsuit right then, we, we, you know, we, we'd say you're, you're better off going somewhere else. Um, if you don't have money yet or you're, you're looking to be a startup, we're, we're really we're trying to qualify you that you're an actual business mm -hmm. and that you've been around for a couple years mm -hmm. and that you actually have legal things that come up in your life. Right, right. Now, it starts at just $89 a month. That's, that's right. That seems pretty affordable. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, looking out, it's, it's amazing kind of where things that used to cost business owners tons of money, uh, payroll, bookkeeping, uh, finance, 
uh, all of, you know, accounts payable uh, and now legal and tax, all of these things have become affordable and have really lowered the barrier for somebody to get a business started. That, that just seems like a ton of services. And I don't know why anybody wouldn't go to this. Now, I, I say the biggest problem is how do people know about you? What kind of marketing are you guys doing to get out to people? Uh, because, you know, I, I, I don't think a lot of, I think a lot of people want to start businesses, but they just don't know how to. Yeah, we've done, um, we did a lot of the free stuff that I was talking about earlier. We started building our email yeah. list. We've got a lot of content now that we uh, have on our website. And um, now we've moved into kind of the paid thing. So we do actually a lot of Facebook advertising. We do All a lot right, of Google. So Facebook and, and podcast advertising now, too. Nice. Yeah. Wonderful. And All right. if somebody needs to reach you, how would they reach you? Uh, the best way is probably just to go to bizcouncil.com, B-I-Z-C-O-U-N-S-E-L, and our telephone number is right there on the website. But could they reach you? Sure. Why not? I'll talk to anybody. <laughs> All right. Well, he's talking to me. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, we're going to be right back, and Tamara is going to have a very, very special segment. We salute the combined efforts over the many years to make Castaic High School a reality. Many behind the scenes did the hard work. The past and current William S. Hart School board members, Steve Sturgeon, Joe Messina, Bob Jensen, Linda Storley, and Dr. Sharice Moore, Superintendent Vicki Enbreck, Castaic Principal Melanie Hagman, and so many others. We at the Castaic High School Construction and Spirit Companies are honored you allowed us to be part of this amazing project. Now, let our kids and our teachers perform their magic. Western Bagel has been serving signature bagels, sandwiches, and hand-roasted coffee since 1947. They're family-owned and operated with 11 locations across SoCal, including Santa Clarita on Bouquet and the Old Kmart Shopping Center. Western Bagel makes their own whipped cream cheese, offering over 10 flavors along with other goodies, pastries, cookies, and muffins. Delicious Western Bagels. Check out their Bagel Brad Dill of the Week, emailed to you every Monday when you register at westernbagel.com. Dreaming of becoming the next Steph Curry or Clay Thompson, or maybe just you want your kid to look good and have fun on the court? Introducing the Shotmaster. The Shotmaster is a revolutionary basketball training aid that isolates the shooting pocket, allows you to develop that consistent shot. Shotmaster will improve your shooting efficiency, accuracy, and shooting percentages dramatically. It's the ultimate training device. There's nothing like it. Visit Shotmaster.net and discover for yourself how Shotmaster will become your game changer. Shotmaster.net. This holiday music is brought to you by Providence Holy Cross Medical Center, your community health partner. To learn more about their award-winning care, call 1-888-HEALING or visit online at providence.org slash holy cross. If you have a business problem, if someone doesn't honor their agreement and you need an aggressive attorney with over 27 years experience, the law office of Peter Bronstein has helped partners resolve disputes, franchisees resolve disputes, and other business owners who have a challenge. Let the law office of Peter Bronstein take your stress away. Visit lacorporateattorney.com. Don't wait too long and lose your rights. Solve your business challenge problem today. Visit lacorporateattorney.com. At iLead Agua Dulce, we believe the most important thing a child can learn in school is who they are. Life's real tests are never standardized, which is why we've developed an individual-based curriculum that values exploration, cooperation, and creativity. As our learners grow, so do we. Our tuition-free charter school is currently enrolling grades TK through 7th and adding 8th grade in 2020. Your young learner will be immersed in a unique environment where possibility and self-discovery are at the core of every experience. The Agua Dulce campus features beautiful indoor and outdoor spaces for hands-on inspiration, including a robotics lab, a garden bed, a greenhouse, and a technology-based exploratorium. Island Agua Dulce is conveniently located on the east side of the Santa Clarita Valley, just off the 14 freeway. Check out our homeschool options, too. To schedule a campus tour or learn more about our programs, visit iLeadAguaDulce.org. We're enrolling now. I Lead Schools. Free to think. Inspired to lead. It's like no other station I've ever listened to. It's great. Your, your hometown station. Welcome back. You're listening to KHS 1220. And... 98.1 FM. Okay. Well, we're back. 
And we have a very, very special segment. Tamara, you are on. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no pressure. Oh, my goodness. Thank the you. The whole for... focus is on you. Oh, it's you. Lot. It's all about Tamara. The, the Tamara Show. Woohoo! <laughs> well, in case you haven't noticed, there's an accent there. So um, I'm interested to speak to you later about how it works for people from different countries in your legal. So let's take that one offline. But I'm actually here to talk to you and picking up on last time I was here. So obviously I wrote the book Balances BS, How to Have a Work-Life Blend. And we were talking about the fact that women are now in America, 40% are breadwinners, uh, even though we hate carbs. Um, we are uh, 40%. Want bread? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, no carbs for me. But I am the breadwinner <laughs> in my family. And, you know, juggling this whole thing of being a serial entrepreneur now for 22 years. Is that like a serial killer? Yeah, similar. It's uh, the same sort of obsession, I would imagine, but done <laughs> in a positive light. Um, and we try not to kill our businesses, you know. That's not the intent. Those are masochists. Uh, Go yes, ahead. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the odds are against us, right? Four out of five for startups. But, um, look, uh, you know, we, we, we spoke about all of that. And uh, what's interesting is I had a lot of people reach out to me and say, okay, well, give me a little bit more detail around what it means to be an ethical business because that's really what I talked about. Um and uh, I thought I would come on and share with you my definition of ethical business, which is... And uh, what is that? So, you know, I think when, when it comes down to it, it's about doing what's right, doing the right thing. But what is what's right? Exactly. It's not being greedy. I can well, tell you Well, everybody that. here has it's probably a different opinion on what that is. Exactly. But actually, it's interesting. I'm studying at MIT part-time um, at the Entrepreneur's Master's Program, which we were talking about earlier. Um, and we, we talk about profit and purpose. And they say the worst thing you can do as an entrepreneur is go out and start your own charity. The best thing that you can do is create an empire of businesses that all commit to giving back and doing good. And, and that really resonated with me. And, you know, in business, if anyone's listening who's a small business, I've been there. I've never had capital. There is no capital for women. 2% of women get all capital. So we need to figure out how to... Um, we need to figure out how to make this stuff work without that. So, And I think a lean business with a bit of scarcity actually creates a very good business because it's simple, it's profitable, and it's scalable. So for me, I've been through that. I've been a startup. I've been in business 22 years. I've built and sold a number of companies. And, and you're only 24 years old. That's the amazing part. Oh, that's part. very sweet. Mm -hmm. 43 yesterday. It's, it's <laughs> pretty depressing. But look... I feel 30 and I act 30, so let's go with that. Um, well, so I, I act like I'm 10, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to get him to sign a parental strip. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we forgot that paperwork. We've got to get our new friend onto that. Um, so, you know, I couldn't afford a service. That was why. Go ahead. <laughs> so I think, you know, you go from survival to, to thriving to payback, which is, you know, buying yourself all the stuff that you, you originally thought you got into business for. And now I'm at this point where it's all about, you know, what impact can I make as an entrepreneur? So I call, uh, my definition is, is a few things. So you can have profit and purpose at the same time. So all my products have giving entrenched in them as a cost of goods. We don't wait until we're profitable to give back. If you make it part of an expense, like a tax or a lid or a label, then you're constantly giving and your giving scales as you scale. So that's my first one. The second one, of course, I'm gonna say is all about um, equality, diversity, inclusiveness. Uh, I feel that, um, you know, uh, being in young president's organization, which is an average turnover of 45 million, there's only, uh, it's under 10% females. So, you know, women are great at business and we need more of them. Um, and uh, obviously being sustainable, eco-friendly is very important. All my packaging for my beauty products are either completely biodegradable or zero waste is what my, because we're one of the biggest producers of unused packaging in the world. <laughs> Unboxing oh. seems to be a thing. I'm like deboxing. Let's figure that one out. And then high efficacy. You know, all my stuff is vegan and cruelty-free. Um, it's uh, organic, um, it's pure, and, and it works. And I really believe that if you spend time on the product, even if it takes you five years to get that hair care right, uh, you don't have to compromise on results just because you're going after something that's high efficacy. So we never start with what are the margins we want to make. We say what is the best product in the business that we can make purely and organically, and then we figure out a price point based on that. So that's us. Well, that sounds great. Now, um, Scott, you had a question. 
Uh, I did have a question. Which this is, is your chance to take your depot. Go. Y- yeah. And we got 20 seconds. Go. Quick. <laughs> why, why at, at this age, with the science that we have, would anybody need to experiment on animals for beauty products? Well, and see, the multinationals do because they sell in China. So that's the thing. So I will not sell my products in China. Simple. I see. There's no need for it. Mm. You're listening to the Ask Brian Radio Show, KHS 1220, 98.1 FM, with our special guest. Thank you very much, and we'll be back next week. Thank you.